Hello and welcome to this knowledge clip on the International Court of Justice judgment on the merits of the case concerning military and paramilitary activities in and against Nicaragua, or as is most commonly referred to, the Nicaragua case. The judgment was rendered in 1986 and is considered to be one of the more significant judgments rendered by the court over the past decades. The reason is that in this judgment, the court touches upon a wide array of international law issues. Still, this knowledge clip focuses on the law for responsibility and more specifically, the way in which the court tackled the question of attribution of conduct. So let's briefly look at some of the facts behind this dispute. Around the end of the 1970s, the left-wing Sandinista Front sought to overthrow the right-wing Somoza regime, which was in power in Nicaragua, and it achieved this in 1979. Despite, of the, despite the overthrow of the Somoza regime, there still remained a number of armed groups which were still loyal to Somoza. And these armed groups, few in the beginning, uh, undertook paramilitary activities uh, in Nicaragua or on the borders of Nicaragua with the purpose of overthrowing the Sandinista movement and restoring the Somoza regime. Now, around the same time, the United States, uh, alarmed by the socialist policies uh, implemented by the Sandinistas, and afraid of the spread of communism in Central America, um, decided to embark on a campaign of support for the Contras. And it decided to provide financial support, logistic support, as well as weapons and training through the CIA. And it did so in quite an overt fashion. So as a result of the policy of the US, the Contras forces grew in numbers and they grew in force. So they engaged in a number of paramilitary activities. And it is these activities uh, that Nicaragua brought uh, before the court. Um, so according to Nicaragua, the United States conceived, created, and organized a mercenary army, the Contra Forces. And through such an army, uh, it killed, kidnapped, and wounded Nicaraguan civilians. So according to Nicaragua, the United States had to be held responsible under international law for the acts of the Contras. These acts were acts of the United States. So the court was called upon to decide on the question of whether the acts of the Contras were attributable to the United States under international law and under which criteria. So according to the codification of the law of state responsibility, attribution is a fundamental concept. Now, what attribution does, it tells us uh, which act or omission, which conduct, uh, is to be considered an act of a state. A state may only be held responsible in relation to certain conduct if such conduct is attributed to that state. So in this case, the United States could only be held responsible for the acts of the Contras to the extent that the acts of the Contras could be attributed to them. Now, the court in this respect underlined that the key criterion is the criterion of control. So first of all, the court looked into whether the Contras were under the strict control of the United States. The court was trying to find out whether the Contras could be considered a de facto organ of the United States. As a matter of principle, the conduct of an organ of the state is attributed to that state. And whereas um, the Contras were not part officially of the US armed forces, if they were seen to be under the strict control of the US, then their acts would be attributable to the US. The court underlined that such strict control exists when an armed group is completely dependent on a state. So in this case, the court had to examine whether the Contras were completely dependent on the US. And it looked into a number of factors. First of all, 
the court underlined that the contracts were not created by the U.S. such. They pre-existed. They were there before um, the U.S. decided to support them. Second, the court found no evidence that the United States devised the strategy of the Contras. Even more significantly, at a point, the United States decided to seize the aid they provided to the Contras, but the Contras did not seize their operations. Thus, the court found that the Contras retained a measure of autonomy. Thus, they were not completely dependent on the United States. And on the basis of the evidence present before it, the court found that the Contras could not be equated to a de facto organ of the United States. So the United States did not exercise strict control over the Contras as an entity. Nevertheless, the court found that the Contras were partially dependent on the United States. And such partial dependence, of course, was inferred from the provision of financial assistance, logistic and military support, supply of intelligence by the CIA, and the selection and payment of the leadership of the Contras, the armed group. So the question is, what is the legal relevance of such partial dependence? Does it suffice for the purposes of attribution of conduct? In order to answer this question, the court espoused a different variation of the control test, and it looked into the effective control test. So the effective control test is applied where there is partial dependence of a group of persons on a state. Now, there is a fine difference between the strict and effective control test. The strict control test is a control over the entity. That the court was in the previous section trying to assess whether the entity as a whole was dependent on the United States. But when we move to the effective control test, we are looking over effective control, not over the entity, but over the specific conduct. So the question in this case was, did the CIA, for example, effectively control the conduct of the Contras? Did it effectively control the operations of the Contras? And this is a question to which a case-by-case -case answer can only be given. Now, effective control does not just mean support or involvement. The state effectively controlling an operation, a conduct, has to be actively involved in the planning of the operation, the choice of the targets. It has to give directives or instructions. So what did the court decide? The court noted that for the conduct of the countries to give rise to international responsibility of the United States, and here I quote from the judgment, it would in principle have to be proved that that state had effective control of the military or paramilitary operations in the course of which the alleged violations were committed. The court does not consider that the assistance given by the United States to the Contras warrants the conclusion that these forces are subject to the United States to such an extent that any acts they have committed are imputable to that state. And here the court uses the term imputably synonymously with the term attributable. Thus, the court found that the Contras were neither under the strict control test nor under the effective control of the United States. So the Contras as a group were not strictly controlled by the United States and their uh, conduct was not effectively controlled by the United States. One should here add a final note. The effective control test might be seen as less exacting a test um, than the strict control but still, it is a very high threshold to meet. So in this specific case, the U.S. financed the Contras, supported them, provide training, provide logistics, but still this was not enough for the court to find that their conduct, the conduct of the Contras, could be attributable to the United States. Thank you for watching this knowledge clip.